There's no doubt about it. If it wasn't for the Romans, we wouldn't have London, back from about AD 40 to AD 50. So here in this video, we go for part two of our Roman look around. In part one, we followed the wall, the Roman wall, which was built around the city and retraced its steps. Here, we bring you some more great Roman artifacts which have been left in London. Yes, if it wasn't for the Romans, we wouldn't have London. So with the Romans occupying Britain invaded in AD 43, by AD 47 the Romans were laying out a new settlement which they called Londinium in the area now occupied by the city of London. Now one of the results of the occupation was the introduction of Roman elements of culture and society and one such element was the building of amphitheatres for public entertainment and for their use for animal fights, gladiatorial combat and the execution of criminals. This is the eastern entrance to Roman London's amphitheatre. So what we're looking at here underground are the actual walls of the amphitheatre, which is absolutely incredible. Now, gladiatorial combats and all the rest of it when you watch films make them look, well, quite glamorous, but they weren't. Many of the people that were involved were slaves and some became major celebrities with very few retiring to be free and rich, very few indeed. Now, what we're looking at here, when you're thinking, why are we looking at the car park, Steve? You see that black line? That represents the amphitheater down below and the actual size of it. So if you see that black line that's going right around there, yeah, that is the size of the amphitheater which they've actually put into tiles in the car park above. So this is all in the city of London and it's at the Guild Hall. So it just gives you an idea how vast this is and also you can come in and visit it all for free. And where is it? It's in the basement. Yep, right underneath here. So what I love about London is you can walk around and all of a sudden you'll come across something. Most people will walk by without taking the blindest bit of notice. But for us here at London Visited, we want to bring it to you. And how about this? This is a piece of the original London wall. And yes, you're right. You did see cars. It is in the basement of a car park here near London Wall. Now, if you watched our video recently where we traced the London wall as it was going around London at the time, as built in AD 120, we didn't show you this bit. It. And the reason for that is we wanted to bring it to you. We wanted to bring it to you separately in this piece of video. So this is the car park I showed you the entrance of near the old Museum of London uh, entrance. And when you go in here, as you can see, you can't get right at it like some other bits of the wall. But what you can see is it's preserved quite nicely behind this perspex so everyone can see it. But I bet you not many people come down here to have a look. So go on, if you're coming to London, be different. Come down here and have a look. So there you go, original bit of London Wall in the London Wall car park. So just to prove that London is being built around bits of the Roman wall, we're now in Emperor House, and that's called that for a reason, yes, the Roman Emperor. And if you fancy a bit of history of London, there you go, you've got it here on the wall. Now we showed you a bit of this in the London Wall video that we did, and this is a piece of the Roman wall that the building has been built around. So you've got the Roman wall that's there, which is supported here as well to keep it at the right height by various jacks. And next to it, you've got bits of other brickwork that have been built in sort of late Victorian times and later which were built adjacent to the wall just to sort of keep its support. So you really have got bits of London here. So what I find absolutely amazing is we've built London up but we've kept the history going. So this is open for you to come and have a look at. It's a free museum. They do say that you've got a book in advance but you don't really need to. You can just turn up because it's quite quiet here. You've got this bit of original Roman wall here and also the original footings as well. Not only that, you've got a display of Roman bits and pieces as well that they found here at this site when they were digging the foundations for the modern building that surrounds it. So what I love here is they've exposed it and you're looking at pieces of rock which would have been put there back in Roman times. What an incredible thing to be standing right next to. It really is quite incredible. Yet yeah, it really dates back from about 120 AD. So if you fancy a bit of history and getting right close to it, then you can do. But as the signs say, don't touch. There you go. But there you go. Just look at this. This was all created then. Right, so not only have you got the bits of the wall here, but then you've got other things that they found nearby. 
So one of the first things that they found is a great mystery, which is this. Now they know what it is and they're not sure why it's there. It's a steel or a tombstone from Eastern Mediterranean dating to the early 200s BC. Now there's Greek inscriptions on it and that was added between 80, 40 AD and 80 AD. And it identifies the figures as a doctor and his mother. Now they don't think this was found during Roman times, they think it was probably a souvenir from a tour that someone made in the 1700s, 1800s, but it was found here. And they're not quite sure when, but as I said before, it dates back to the 200s BC. And it was found in 1957 during post-war reconstruction and workmen discovered it underneath the cellar right nearby. No one ever will quite know why it was buried there. And then you've got this rough background to it as well, which means it was only meant to be seen from the other side. So it would have been hung on the wall with that rough side. So in these cabinets on display here, not only have you got these Roman things, you've got everything up and to and including the 20th century. And they just help archeologists understand some of the things and some of the different events, etc., that took place here where we're standing. So we're looking now at sort of Roman pottery. And these patterns on these bricks were from hollow bricks, which were used as part of the heating system and warm air flowed up through a furnace. This would have been a container for storing or transporting food and drink and the sizes varied. And this is fascinating because it's a tile with cat prints, which you can see on the right hand side there because the Romans brought cats with them to Britain. So here you've got lots more pieces of Roman pots. Now some of them would have been used in the kitchen and others would have been used for display purposes only. And who knows which was which, but what you have got is bits that are left over from there. Some were made locally and some were brought in from other countries. So here we're looking at pieces of stone that were used to build the wall, but stone is not naturally found in London. So the Roman Londoners would have bought large amounts of limestone in called ragstone by boat from Kent. They also reused bits of masonry from older buildings. Now some of the stones that we're looking at here were helped to use building the bastions and these stones were laid in the foundations of those and were built around 150 years after the wall. So what you're looking at here are bits of rock that would have been moved by the Romans themselves. Right, let's go and have a look at some of the Roman coins. How about these? So the coin on the top row is the oldest and that dates from 69 AD to 79 AD. But all these coins, other ones, are all within AD 361, which is quite incredible. And they've all got different emperors on the back. Now, if you're really enjoying this, you need to see our video that we did at the Museum of London. I'll put a link up in the top right hand corner to that. And the reason for that is there's loads more Roman coins in even better condition in there as well. Don't forget, all this has been found around the building here, whereas the Museum of London has collected it from all over London and therefore can give you and show you even better quality ones. And the final thing to show you is this, which would have been used to uh, as a hairpin, which would have been a piece of animal bone. Once again, found here and would have been used in a bun or something like that to keep the hair in place. All this found at the site of this building. So here we're at the London Mytherium, right, which is right by Bank Station. And once again, with more Roman artifacts which have been found here, and a lot of them in really good shape, especially the coins which you're going to see in a second, and a lot of the things and a lot of the tools, etc., that we've got here on the wall. But what's really special about this place, it was also known as the Temple of Mithras here on Walbrook. And it's a Roman Mytherium that was discovered here in Walbrook in 1954 during a building's construction. Now what I love about all these Roman discoveries is how deep down it is and it just goes to show you how much everything has been built on top of the Roman remains that were there at the time and how much lower everything was. So this was probably the most famous 20th century Roman discovery in London as this temple was discovered which was to the mystery god Mithras. So they believe this area was actually built in the mid third century and dedicated to Mithras or perhaps jointly to several deities which were popular among Roman soldiers at the time. And then it was probably rededicated in the early fourth century. So not only when they discovered the temple did they find these remains of the actual temple itself, but lots and lots of artifacts, which many of them are sitting in the Museum of London. 
Now you can pay a fee, come down and see this. And there's a small light show that's put on with this with the music in the background as well to really bring it to life. So if you fancy doing that, just Google London Marithium and then it'll all come up. The amazing thing, you find Roman remains everywhere. And yes, this is the underground and it's Tower Hill Station, right by the Tower of London and Tower Bridge. And if you come in here and you look up, like a lot of things in London, here you've got the base of the Roman wall, which they found when they excavated this area. And it's all this area that's within the brickwork, within the black. So yes, you've got original Roman wall in the London underground. So next time you come to this platform, just look at everyone else. No one else is gonna realize that something even older than the Tower of London is right by them. So we've got a fantastic church here built by Sir Christopher Wren, which is brilliant. So actually that really, really dates it. But the history down here goes even deeper than that because we're in Woolbrook. Now, Woolbrook is actually an old abandoned river. It was a subterranean river which was here during the Roman settlement of London and therefore that's why you've got the name Wall for the London Wall and Brook. So as you come out of this church this road in this area here so basically the where the road lies is where the underground stream or where the stream at the time which would have been exposed in Roman times would have gone. So that would have gone down to the Thames and this would have been a tributary coming into the Londinium settlement. Now, over the years, many of London's old rivers have been built over, such as the River Fleet, the River Tyburn, uh, the Westbourne, uh, and some of them are still over underground stations. We've covered those in previous videos as well. But it's incredible to think that the Romans would have used Woolbrook here uh, for washing, daily life, etc. And now look at it. It's the city of London with tube trains and all the rest of it around, which is quite incredible. So once again, Roman history right here in the city of London under your feet, but no one would know it. So I really hope you've enjoyed our video showing you different bits of Roman London. And this goes so well together with the other video we did when we did the walk where the Roman wall would have been surrounding the city of London as it is now, an old Londinium then. And I've put a link to that video in the top right hand corner. So if you click on that, I'll see you in there.